what each factory does and what it does better. You guys know what's going on in a lot of those places, but there's been some questions and some things have moved from place to place. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. And I'm sure you guys know you're watching the full version on the second channel that goes out on Friday nights and yeah, all that good stuff. Or you're watching the condensed, it's whichever one you see on the screen. I've been out of town for a little bit, so I wanted to thank newest patrons David and Eric and upgrading patrons Christopher and Larry. Awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for all that. Oh, I can't do it without you. So what are we talking about? So once they moved out of the uh, Menlo Park facility and into a real factory, where'd they go? The Numi plant was iconic. It was not only the largest factory in North America, but it was the most productive. It was a new step forward in how things were made. It was a joint venture between General Motors and Toyota. And it ended because there were some corporate cultural conflicts, I guess you could say. And it made it, uh, there was a little bit of friction. Things didn't always work right. It was described as a zombie marriage. At the end, with General Motors in crisis, in bankruptcy, Toyota was making, you know, some Toyota Tacomas, some Corollas, some Pontiac Vibes, and it was done. It was time. So Toyota made a big investment in Tesla. They wanted to electrify. They knew that that was the future. So they started building RAV4s through Tesla. Tesla powertrain RAV4s. So they sold them the plant. They sold it to them. <laughs> for the low, low price of $42 million in stock. It wasn't even cash. Toyota actually, as I recall, gave them cash over and above the 42 million as part of an investment, something like 8 million. It was a $50 million stake. And so they got this factory and it's a, a big productive beast. It was a, it was a warehouse. It was a, an indoor maze. It was far bigger than analysts said that they would ever, ever need. Because they're just gonna make the Model S and eventually the Model X there. I mean, they're also gonna make, you know, seats and motors and battery components, but really it's still too big. Even though as a Numi plant, it was just assembly for Tesla, it was going to be whole manufacturing or at least a lot more manufacturing. So they got this place. Now this picture is very out of date. All this has been developed into housing at the top here. There's some new sprung structures here that they're using for production, but it's kind of a mess. They went ahead and advanced it, making models three and eventually models Y. So what's made here today, they might still be making some motors, but I don't think so. They're just making three Y, S and X, and that's it. They may have some prototyping going on in here, but it may be done in Hawthorne down by SpaceX, where they've done prototyping in the past. So that's uh, the first factory, man. And then of course we heard the announcement, they're gonna build this giant uh, battery factory. And I thought, I saw that and I thought, that's crazy, man, just buy the batteries. But they saw something that I didn't, which was that they needed a lot of batteries, like a lot. Um, an amount that they described as more than were currently available in the entire world to get to 20 gigawatt hours so they can make a half million cars. That's a lot of batteries and it was gonna be huge. So I guess I should have said what they're doing here. I said what they're doing. I didn't say what they're doing better. What they're doing is building cars better than Numi ever did. The analyst said, oh, you'll never get to 460,000 units out of that factory. And they have. They have, they've exceeded it. So they're doing something better. They introduced, you can't see it in this map because it's not here yet, but they introduced all kinds of new storage methods, uh, automated vertical warehouses. It's pretty neat. But what are they doing in Nevada that's different? Well, one thing they're doing, again, it was supposed to be ginormous, but it ended up being, you know, a little bit smaller. So what they're doing differently is they're still getting the same output. They're getting more output than they expected to get from this entire place. They changed the processes and procedures. 
The equipment is more advanced than existed at the time. They're getting more output from a vastly smaller factory. This was a bit contentious because they got so much money in, in grants. $1.3 billion was the cost of the factory, and it's expected to cost about that much again uh, in tax breaks. But what happened is uh, they realized we can build the same amount in a much smaller factory by going from linear production to vertical production. And if you look at old CATL and LG and Panasonic battery factories, they were linear until this came along. And now they are also vertical. They're stacked. They're using the cubic space. So what they did differently is make stuff and make it better and in a smaller area. So what are they doing here? Well, when they started, it was just batteries and packs. At one point, they were doing the motors here. I think they still are. But they also, at a time, were doing power walls and they still are, though not in this building. And what they're also doing here is semis. And I've been saying that for a while, but now it's official, we know, because the semi unveiling is being held, not here, but just off the map down the road at the next building. So that's what they're doing differently there. So then we've got New York. Yeah, where the Buffalo Wild Things are. So this was even more contentious. Elon. Uh, and Tesla did not own this. Elon was on the board of directors when it was a solar city plant. They were going to be making solar products. Well, they had already been in contract to make power walls. They've got the expertise. Let's just hire solar city to make uh, our chargers and our power walls. They can, we can farm. Well, that once they did the merger, they traded a bunch of engineers to make it work even better. So what do they do here? Well, they make the chargers, the superchargers and they make the solar roof. And what they do differently is on the roof, as you know, it's solar tiles. It's not solar panels. It's very, very difficult to compete on cost for solar panels against a country like China with all that manufacturing prowess. No, they, they make very high-end solar shingles, basically. And they do make the superchargers, and that is a big deal because we've seen what Electrify America and others are doing with their charging networks. They're just cobbling them together without a unified design strategy, without a single source for manufacturing. It's a mess and it works more poorly than even I would expect. And I would expect it to work pretty bad. And in terms of where superchargers are made, they're only made here. And the solar panels, the solar tiles, they're only made here. That's what they do. And they're doing it well and a little bit differently. And they did hit all of their targets for jobs and investment. And so did Nevada. All those targets to get their uh, credits have been satisfied. So then we get to Shanghai. Now this is the Numi plant. What a mess. Stamping over to Body and White over to General, the paint shop, General Assembly. Got GA4 over here, there's a fifth one, I think. You know, this is also General. It's, it's a mess. But again, this was groundbreaking at the time. This was a big deal. So in Shanghai, they said, you know what? Let's do it a little differently. Let's do a straight line. Stamping, body and white, paint, General, out the door. Parts in, products out, that's it. And they've expanded to put the casting uh, over here. So you've got your mega castings being made over here. Right in line. Very good. This is what I would call Tesla Factory 2.0. Everything's in a straight line. How could it possibly be better? Well, the expansion for the Model Y is quite a bit bigger than this. So it should have more capacity. They started putting all of the parts at all of the loading bays. We don't need a warehouse. We just bring them in and leave them there until we need them. But how can we make this better? And the answer is we're going to go vertical. We're going to do what I call robots in the rafters. Things go up high, things go down low. There they are. They're disappearing and they'll be used later in a different spot. We're paying for all this vertical space. We have it, the vertical space. Why are we not using it? Here you, yeah. oh. Here you can see the use of vertical space. 
this was previously done in linear space, which slows everything down. And again, if you can save just 50 bucks a car and you're making a million cars in this factory, that's a half billion dollars over 10 years. This is a design philosophy change and it's different. So what are they making in Shanghai? Three and Y, and that's it. Oh, and by the way, they also have expanded to start using, with the Model Y, they started using the warehouse on wheels philosophy. We need even more storage, so this is just across, the canal is right over here. All of these are full of stuff, parts. It is cheaper than building a warehouse. Easier, quicker, more versatile, I guess. I assume they'd rather have a warehouse, but they don't. So Giga Berlin, the rebirth. Now the expansion in Shanghai was probably only about five, six million square feet, and it only makes Model Y. Well, this whole factory is about that. It's about six million square feet, and it only makes the Model Y. Let's go inside. This doesn't really show the use of vertical space, but again, they went vertical with it. Everything speeds up when you go vertical because you shorten the distance. Yet you'd like to have fewer atoms in your car, but for the production process, you'd like to have less distance to travel. So that was the big deal in Berlin. And of course, they are using the warehouse on wheels. They're doing all the things that they've learned in Shanghai and other factories that work. And you know, now we've got workers from Shanghai going back to Fremont to show them how to speed things up a little bit. And then we get to Texas and everything's giga in Texas. Well, this is where the Cybertruck was supposed to be born some time ago. We've had some battery delays, but they were going to build it in three distinct phases. And then they raised $5 billion and $5 billion more, so they're going to build it all at once. That's a big deal because it gives them a lot of flexibility. And on yesterday's video, I talked about urgency and how the Cybertruck is not super urgent. So what ends up happening is you get to take some time and dial it in, you get to build model Ys. And of this 9 million square feet, about 6 million of it is more or less dedicated to the model Y, but boy, did they go vertical on this one. From what I've seen, it looks like they may have two paint shops stacked on top of each other. That's never been done before that I've seen. And it allows them to do things that others are not doing. But you've got this other big space. What are they doing there? The Cybertruck. You don't need nine, well, they're good, but I, they want to build a, oh, you know, a million Model Ys, they can do it. They want to build two, three million trucks in a much smaller space. They can do it because the truck is different. Everything is different. What's new here is they're also building the batteries. They've got the battery factory in the factory. If you get outside of the factory, they've also got over in this area, the cathode building. They're building parts for the battery. This hasn't been done. This is new. So not only do they have a, a process that's more efficient, a product that's more efficient, but they're more verti vertically integrated than anyone we have seen in the automotive industry in at least 100 years. It's pretty exciting. That's what they do here. They're using an expanded warehouse on wheels in Texas. These are all full of stuff. Would they rather have an Indiana Jones style mega warehouse capable of holding everything? Yeah, probably, probably, because then they could go vertical, but that takes time and money to build. And this is instant. We can do it now. We can do it today. We can pay for it by the month. It's a good, quick solution because labor is not infinite and there's more important things that they need to build. The supercharger factory in Shanghai, it'll make 10,000 stall units per year. Now, what are they doing differently? So I did get a chance to ask the supercharger expansion rep for Tesla, where all do they make the superchargers? And he said, just in New York. Oh, and also in Shanghai. And I said, what's the difference between the two? He said, I can't tell you because I've never seen one. I imagine they use much of the same design philosophy, but he's never seen one because they don't get shipped to the U.S. What they're doing differently, so in this factory, it is again, there's been very few uh, shots of it because it's just, it looks like it was an existing building, but it's just a long, skinny building with loading docks at each end. Material goes in one side, finished products come out the other. 
So what they're doing differently is they're designing it themselves. They're building it themselves. They've got a nice, clean, straight shot. They're building in volumes that other companies are not, which affords them economies of scale and the ability to use an assembly line, which makes it simpler, more repeatable, less margin for error, better costs. But they're also doing the assemblies where, where it's already built to get, there's like three or four of them and they're already in concrete and they just bring them out and lower them down, wire it up, get out, we're done. If we got the permits, we can get this built in a weekend at most. And there are time-lapse videos you can see of Tesla superchargers being installed in a weekend. Permitting is really the big hassle. And if you'd like to know why there aren't very many new superchargers going in in cities, it's a shortage of space. It's a lack of uh, access to sufficient power without upgrading. A lot of malls are already tapped out for capacity. And if you talk about a parking garage, it is so much more difficult to install them in a parking garage because you don't have overhead clearance for your heavy equipment. And they also say, we want to ring cities instead of fill cities because most people in cities are charging at home or will be in the next few years as apartments and condos wake up to the reality of electric cars. So the last one, the Mega Pack Factory. So this is in Lathrop. Elon said, we're leaving California. Yeah, just the headquarters left. Everything's still there. They've expanded since then. They even broke ground and opened a new factory in just a year. This factory makes one thing and it makes it well, mega packs. Mega packs are the giant cabinet sized things that are used for grid scale energy storage made on earth by humans. <laughs> They're going to remember that in the robot uprising, I promise you. And the mega pack factories look a little bit something like this. And you know what they look like. So we will shortly get into uh, the Q&A because there's a lot of stuff about factories and I left enough time to discuss all the stuff. So we'll come back to that in a second. But first, of course, I wish to thank my patrons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff. You keep me in business and I appreciate it. I cannot do it without you and I mean that. Well, there it is, and there you go. If you enjoyed this, uh, consider watching the full 30-ish minute version over on the second channel, My Tesla Live. That's where we do the live stream every Friday at 7 p.m. and a podcast with Bear from Bear's Workshop every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me your thoughts, your wisdom, your juicy brilliance into them in the comments below, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I simply cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flap.